Brother, you want to come up here and you got a hammer with you? I can use my finger. Or actually, I can use the mouse. Is that a wireless mouse? That should work. I'm just clicking on it, but it should, this should work. But you know, my grandkids love to take this thing and then they like to do the... The pointer. Yeah. And sometimes... <laughs> and there's works. no cats in here. I, I can't help you. That, that should work. My IT guy just had to leave, so... Oh, there we go. That works. I think it works. How about this? That works. I'll just come over here and hit an arrow. Uh, all the things that we read, the armor that you put on. I've heard uh, the breastplate, the helmet, the belt, uh, everything, the, the gospel, the peace. All the pieces of armor. But I've heard this said many times. Why is there no armor for the back? Well, because you're not supposed to retreat. Well, I, I, I only have one issue with that. There is armor for the back. And it's in this, these verses. There is armor for the back. And so I'm going to go here in verse 18 and read there. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, I didn't end there. There's not a period. That means there's more coming. There's always more coming. <laughs> I like that part. The Word of God has more coming. There's always more coming in the Word of God. And when you think about what it's saying there, we go to the next one. Uh, who is someone's missing armor? That is our title of the message. Who are you someone's missing armor? Well, what's that mean? That's a good question. Uh, all of us in the service... We all served in different... I was communications in the Air Force. I chose the Air Force because I love flying. I love airplanes. I could never be a pilot because I had very bad vision back then. I still do now, but I had cataract surgery, so it's much better. <laughs> but uh, I, had, I had very bad vision. I could not become a pilot. You, to become a pilot, you've got to have good vision. You, it can get worse while you're in, but you can't get in and become a pilot with bad vision. So what I did was I chose a career field that my recruiter actually told me about that was good advice, and that was uh, communications troubleshooting. For you older ones, which are, which are most here, that's Ma Bell of the Air Force. And so if any communications failed, they called us and said, find the problem. And then we called somebody to fix it once we found the problem. Good job. <laughs> and so uh, that's what I did. Uh, uh, Brother Nelson, what did you do? Infantry, brother Rep Lago. <laughs> Machine gunner. Cryptology. Cryptology. Uh, <laughs> For those that do not know, him and I go way back. We were bus kids together on the same bus route to church. We go way back. And so I know he didn't know that when he lined us up like this, but I was the one that turned out good. <laughs> But <laughs> who was the other one? Did I miss some? Oh, yes, the Air Force. The Air Force. Technician. Which one? Missile technician. Missile technician. All right. You're the ones that makes the parking lot in Iraq a parking lot. Yes, sir. Uh, aircraft mechanic. Aircraft. So how did you keep those pterodactyls in the air? Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I just wondered. And so do you notice what the military likes to do? We like to pick on each other. But what we know is they've got my back and I've got their back. We pick on each other. We all know the Air Force is better and yet they still pick. <laughs> but we still have each other's back. I can, when you ask an Army guy, it may be with the other ones, I know Army, they'll say, well, what MOS were you? Well, Air Force, we don't use MOS. I said, what are you doing, saying mouse wrong? I don't know. MOS. In Air Force, it was when I was in anyway, AFSC. What was your AFSC? What's your job title? And, but I know what the Army says. I was an instructor, so I got to teach cross trainees from different ones, learn the different things. And you'd say what you did. And you learned that what they did is not what you do, but you're all under the same rules. Yeah. You've all under the same rules, doing different things. We're all pastors, we're in different areas. I am in inner city Syracuse. When you ask me how's it going and I say it's crazy, you know what I mean? 
it's crazy. It's crazy. Just within the last couple months, we've had the demoniac of Gadara running around the church, foaming at the mouth, falling down, spitting. You had to call the police. You know, there's a guy out here fixing to die. You know, bring some of that, whatever the spray is or stuff you give them. Because they're, that's our church. We had a guy come in with all robes on and stuff, and he come up and looked, was looking bad. I'm, I'm fixing our pulpits like this high. Whoever designed that, they need to be shot. I mean, I'm telling you, that thing is high. You, you guys have been there, I know. That thing is high. It's like, that is not, I think if you get them married, how are you going to get the train, the ladies, you know, it's just, just, just bad design, just bad design. But anyway, he comes in and he's walking around and he's just staring at people. And nobody's doing anything, so I get down to talk to him. I'm, we're starting to, actually it was the military day. We, I had a video honoring the military that was playing, so I was able to get down and, and talk to him. And, and I was the only one he would answer, and he didn't do much of that. And uh, to make a long story short, I was wondering, is he going to pull out a gun and start shooting people? That's what I was worried about. So I'm getting ready to jump him. You know, I'm up high. I just I get a good flying leap. And 180 pounds, I guess I can knock him down. I saw the Marines do it, so I know I can do it. <laughs> and so uh, I was ready. That, that's inner city work. Some of you in the country, I'm from the country where, where we lived. Or was your address actually in Sherburne? No, North Norwich. North Norwich. Okay, that's what I knew it was in, in between. I couldn't remember it was in between there, in North Norwich. <laughs> and uh, my bus route well, it picked me up and then pick him up. We'd go to church. Different areas. Different things, everybody, wherever your church is, it's different than where somebody else's church is. That's why you can't compare ministries. Because you're different. You're different. And what I found out this morning is the three preachers he preached, uh, four preachers he preached, they're not just different, but he said, these are the non-normal ones. So he called us abnormal, okay? So I understand that. We're the abnormal ones. And so that's the way it goes. Well, uh, again, I've heard said many times, if I can hit the right button, that it's been said that there is no armor for the Christian back. Well, the fact is that's simply not true. Go to verse 18. Praying always. Now, this is going to match right in with every message we've heard today. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for myself. Oh, it doesn't say that, does it? There, there's that word again. It was mentioned earlier today. The biggest, small, the smallest, biggest word in the Bible. All means all. Oh, that's all it means. It is the smallest, biggest word in the Bible. Prayer, perseverance, and supplication for all saints. For all saints. That's important. What does God want me to know? That I have to care about those that are in the battle with me. Now I understand you're not in New Orleans. You're not playing football. You're not that kind of saint. But we're in a better battle. We've got a battle that we've got to win. We're in a battle that really matters. Uh, the other things out there, nothing else really matters. It, I mean it really doesn't matter. I don't care what job somebody has, electric company, president of the United States. We're the job that really matters. Amen. Nothing else does. Right. So when somebody else thinks that they're looking down on you, well, it doesn't really matter because we matter. <laughs> it, our job is the difference between heaven and hell. Yeah. That, that's the difference. None of these other ones are. Now look at the armor. This is actual armor from a Roman centurion. You got the front. You got the back. There's armor. There's armor. But there's one problem. What that armor does not have. There's not eyes in the back. Yeah, I, I, can, I know wives have eyes in the back of their heads. At least my mom did. So I, and your mom probably did. And I know my wife does. But I don't. You know, guys, one, one direction, one thought, yeah. we think of one thing. That's why we'll never understand because ladies, <sighs> shotgun. Yeah. You know, we're just one direction, one thought, one thing. But one thing I don't have, you guys look so much better now. Because I don't have eyes in the back of my head. 
I cannot see what's going on behind the back of my head. And so what we learn in the military, despite whatever service we're in, that we have each other's backs. We've got the same standards. Now, does every soldier follow the standard? No. We have problems just like we do in churches. <laughs> every soldier doesn't follow the standard. Every soldier doesn't do what they're supposed to do. But it is imperative that we do what we're supposed to do because we have somebody else's back. And if we don't do that, there's going to be great issues. In the military, it's called the Uniform Code of Military Justice. It's the same for everybody. Well, we've got the same standard, the King James Bible. Now, when I first started serving God, it was because of a missionary in Spain where I got stationed. I, got, I didn't get Iraq. I didn't get Iran. I didn't get this. I got Spain right outside of Madrid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Air Force. You should have gone Air Force. <laughs> Uh, it was not a better assignment than, uh, there may have been equal, but there was no better than being in Spain. But what did I learn in, over there in Spain? I learned everybody's got to follow the same regulations. But what I also did, I started serving the Lord, the uh, Stensis family, some of you probably support them uh, in Uganda. Uh, well, the daddy, the original one, first pastored in Spain before he went there. And it was witnesses in that church. I got saved in Norwich, New York. I mean, Sherburne, New York. Actually, Morris, New York, if you know where Morris is. Nobody knows where Morris is. No, I didn't think so. Oh, well, I, that's right, you would. <laughs> and so, and, and he does. So, but that's where I actually got saved. I got saved because an atheist uncle gave me a Gideon's New Testament when I was eight years old. Atheist uncle. He wanted to get rid of a Bible he was given because he was a college student. He didn't want it. And he gave me that Bible. So I got saved because of that. But years and years and years had gone on, and my parents had moved and it didn't send us to church on the bus anymore when we got to Florida. And then I joined the Air Force. I got to Spain, to make a long story short. People from this church came and witnessed to me, and I was already saved, but what they were trying to do is convince me church was okay. And I argued. How do you argue against the UCMJ? It's a uniform code of military justice. Our commander, God, wrote it. There is no mistakes in that thing. Right, right. But what I did, one of, the, one of my friends gave me a Bible, which really wasn't one because it was a new King James. And if you don't know this yet, the new King James is not a Bible. <laughs> I thought it was at the time. But it's got more errors than, than the non-inspired version. But uh, I had that. And, and I didn't, you know, and I argued, and I found out, listen, God's right. And in the military, you think I'd have got this. you got to meet together. When it's commander's call, who shows up? The only one that's not allowed to be at commander's call is the one that's doing guard duty. Otherwise, you better be at commander's call or, or whatever. You've got, you got to be there. You've got to be there to plan for the battle. Well, listen, we're the ones planning for the battle. We're the leaders in our area. We're the ones that's sitting here fighting, and with, even with all the differences. Here is an arm, uh, a Roman division, one of their formations. Okay. Who's got the back? The back is covered. The back is covered. The back is not exposed. It's not. You watch any formation back in those days and you see what the Bible's talking about. The back was always covered. The only time it's not covered is if the soldier's alone. And that's one of the problems we get in as, as, as preachers. Sometimes we forget. We get in our cave. Don't call me. There are no others. I am the only one that believes this way. But there isn't. I've kept a database since 1991 of independent Baptist churches. I try to keep it up to date as much as I can. I, my goal is to get 7,000 churches in America that I know believe like we do. At, at the minimum, stand on the King James Bible. At the minimum. I, I've been hovering around 6,300. 
That's what I've been hovering around. My goal is to hit the 7,000 mark. That, that is my goal. And you know what it tells me keeping that database? I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. You know what these meetings do for little guys like them? It lets them know we're not the only one. He's in Greg, New York. You don't find Greg, New York by accident. You don't find it on purpose. How people in Greg decide to move to Greg, I don't know. Because Greg's out there. I mean, it's just out there. And so, how do my kids, you know what my kids said when we went to meetings? They said, wow, I didn't know there were more like us. It's like, there, there's, there's a whole lot of them. You know, I, I like going to Youth of Blaze. Why? Because there's a lot of people there. And my kids go, there's a lot of people like us. There, there's more. Now, listen, do I agree with everybody that goes? To, I don't agree with me. I mean, I, I, my biggest problem isn't with anybody sitting in here. My biggest problem is the one I see in the mirror. And I don't know who it is, but he sure looks old. I tell you that. But uh, he's my problem. And I don't agree with everything, but we stand on the King James Bible. We've got the same uniform code of military justice. We're all trying to do the same thing. And listen, you may not know what I know. I, you, I may not know what you know. But we're all headed the same direction. Amen. And that's what's most important is we're headed that same direction. So important. So, Romans 16, 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only give I thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. You understand they work together. They weren't over each other. I'm getting tired of everybody saying, uh, we don't say that, but you know, uh, other churches, well, you got to have a denominational leader. That's what Paul was. No, he wasn't. I mean, you get definitely a reading. You're not reading between the lines. You're reading outside the, the, the cover is what you're reading <laughs> to get that. And there is no denominational leader. But what we have to do, because we're individual bodies. This is a body. Seneca Bible Baptist Church. Emmanuel Baptist Church is a body. I need my back covered. I need you guys. Yes. I need you. I, I cannot do what I'm doing without you. If I didn't hear that message from a Marine this morning, it came from a Marine. You must have got it from an Air Force guy, right? <laughs> it's a, well, actually, I... I I've heard this many times, too. I'm sorry if this steps on your toe, but I never preach another man's message. Is anybody here cook? And does anybody cook? Raise your hand if you're a cook. Okay, where do you get your recipes from? Yeah, somebody else. Listen, if your recipes stink, <laughs> get somebody else's recipe. <laughs> If your recipes stink, get somebody else's recipe. If your messages are killing people, <laughs> get somebody else. I'm, I'm not saying don't work. What I'm saying is it's a UCMJ. If you come up with something new and nobody's ever heard before, you're not in it. How do I know what I'm preaching? Because Jesus preached it. He wrote it. <laughs> It's been preached before. If you come up with something that's never been heard before, I'm weary. <laughs> I'm going, I'm a pastor. I'm a shepherd. That doesn't sound right. I'm going to show you something you've never heard before. You hear that in the military? You know they're commies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Reasons you should watch out for your fellow soldier. Number one, God told us to do it. Is that good enough? <laughs> God told us to do it. You're a watchman. Under who? Israel, the whole nation. Okay. I, I'm, I'm your watchman. You're my watchman. He said, Brother Vince, you said something sounds funny. Well, if we disagree, then we'll agree to disagree. Now, if I come in and I change my Bible, I'm sorry, that's a litmus test. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a, that is a litmus test with me. Uh, don't ask me to your fellowships if you don't preach the King James Bible. If you're stuck on Calvinism, listen, I'll love you. I'll talk to you. I'll be your friend. 
but you know, I don't do Calvinism. I just, I just don't do it, okay? That's, that's a different army. That, that's a different country. That is not on my side. Uh, matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. As soon as I find the arrow here, my glasses don't work so much anymore. The devil, the devil wants to blow it. Why should I watch out for everybody? Because the devil wants to blow you up. He doesn't like Seneca Bible Baptist being here. Matter of fact, he's going to move it over. No. <laughs> uh, he doesn't want your church there. There's, you can hear different preachers and go, well, I like that preacher. Some of you are like, ah, let's go. Some of you are like, okay, this is what the, I don't care what you like as long as it's the Bible. I don't care, but I don't want to see any church fail that's preaching the Bible. I don't care if the guy's polished. I don't care if he's a rough stone. I don't want to see any church fail. I don't want you to fail. I don't want me to fail. I, I hate getting F's. I don't want you to fail. I, I don't care if you're just like me or not. As long as you got the same UCMJ and you're listening to God and you're doing your work where you are, I want you there because you've got my back. I need you. The reason I started my database, I had a young man call me and say, I need to find a church for my mom. It's in Ohio. I, couldn't, I thought, I got this. I got 1,500 churches listed. I couldn't find a church within 400 miles of her. I said, that will never happen again. I'm working with the military. <laughs> they got family, and they're going to be going back home. I want to know where their churches are so I can recommend them. So I started the database because I wanted to have their back. I wanted to be able to, I didn't want to win somebody to the Lord and have them go to Timbuktu and there's no buck to it. I, I want to be able to find a place. Ephesians 5, 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Second Timothy, by evil men, seducers, waxing worse. Listen, the days we live in, we need churches. We don't need quitters, we need churches. And I understand the, the depression and we go through and some people are going to fall. And listen, this is what some people do. Well, I'm sure glad he left. Man, I've never felt that about somebody. Yeah, well, I knew he had problems. Well, did you try to help him? Yeah, when, when I was in the military and I was in charge, if one of my troops had a problem, yeah. man, I took him aside. I, I tried to help him. I tried to get him along the way. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but you got to try. you got to try. you got to help because they're the ones that got your back. They go, they don't have your back. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and wise tables and exercise, we've heard that word today, thyself rather unto godliness. Listen, I need you to help me exercise. I learned one thing in the military. There's some exercises I'm not good at. When I got in the military, I weighed 129 pounds soaking wet at 5'11". I could do sit-ups, but you know what? I had a backbone <laughs> that rubbed on the the ground, or concrete, we did it in the concrete in our basic training in Air Force, which is a dumb place to do sit-ups, but that's where we did it. <laughs> and with my bony back, yeah, it, it was there. And, and what do you like? You like somebody to hold your feet. You like somebody to be there to help. You, isn't it fun, military, to exercise together? I mean, you, you get into it. It's better for you when you're working with somebody else. It is. We are gregarious people. God made us sheep. Sheep like to be around sheep. This guy may be ugly as sin, but I like to be around him. I mean, <laughs> we, we like to be around. I, I, matter of fact, I never told him this before. I never told my wife this before. When I saw you and your wife and how you work together that many years, I said, I want a wife like that. I am not kidding. That's what I said. I got a wife like that. And I'm grateful for him. I'm grateful for your guys' example to me. Amen. So grateful. And I'm telling you, we're in, this, we're in this together. We're in this together. We're fighting the devil. We're not fighting each other. We're fighting the devil. Regions in watching out for your fellow soldier. I'm not going to go fast through these because the end is really where I'm getting at. 
And we've heard this already today. Pray always. Brother Rice, I think about you a lot. I may not write you a lot. I may not call you, but I think about you a lot. If you don't know, he's been to Area 51. He knows the truth. <laughs> he's ate some of them. No. <laughs> Listen. I got the database. I go through it. When I hear about church meetings, I love to go to the church. If I don't go, there's a reason I don't go. And it's not because I'm the only one. It's, man, I know. I was in the military. I need you guys. I need you guys. And I'm going to try to go if I can go. Personal contact. This is the age of this is the age of the cell phone, the age of this Google, Twitter. That's not personal contact. No, right. This is personal contact. Brother, I love you. I love you, brother. Bless you. Man, I don't know how people can get, cannot do that. It's like, and listen, I, I grew up in a family that had sexual abuse from the outside, and I got to the point where I didn't like a man putting his hand on me. If you came up behind me and slapped me like in football, you know, I, you got hit. <laughs> 129, 129 pounds of fury. <laughs> you got hit. And I had to learn. Listen, there's nothing wrong with, with personal contact. Getting along, going out together, doing things together. And I understand some of us don't live near, but I'm going to find some way to find somebody to get close to and, and be able to, because you need it and I need it. Amen. We need that as men of God. We, we, our families need it. I mean, they need it even more so than we do. Oh, I'll fight the liberal, give me a gun. Yeah, but what about your family? What about your family? We were, we were missionaries to the military for 20 years. I know what the families go through because that's who I got stuck with while the soldiers were out. I didn't come out right, did it? <laughs> I didn't get stuck with them, but I got stuck with their problems. Personal visits, use hospitality. Invite others over. That's what we're supposed to do. I got an inv invite to come here. I came. Invite others over. There's some people, it's like, it's... I, there's a church, I can't remember where it was, it was north of here somewhere, up in, in uh, the north country in New York. Uh, I don't have a list on my database. Well, I probably do, but it says don't put online. Because the pastor, I put him online, he says, I don't want anybody to know we're here. What is our job? Yeah, right. Is to reach people. If nobody knows we're there, how do we do that? I mean, I know there's an Air Force. I know there's an Army. I know there's a Navy. I know there's a Marines. I know there's space cadets. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the, the new one. Uh, and, and I know where every base is. And it's advertised. I mean, occasionally there's a little one like my son was in Jordan. Where are you in Jordan? Do you want to die, Dad? Hey, listen, I got an SCI clearance, you can tell me. <laughs> that doesn't mean you have the need to know. I, I need to know where my son is. <laughs> but don't hide yourselves. I mean, just don't hide yourselves. Uh, the, the worst thing, I, from a missionary's perspective, when a pastor says, call me. And you can never get them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking, how do their people get them? Yeah. I mean, how do people that really need them, and they, how do they get them? Because I call and call and call, I email, I text, I, I send pigeons. <laughs> Nothing. Why? Why? Why am I not getting anything? I should be, because there should be personal contact. There should be. Don't hide yourselves. Personal touch, what we just showed. Personal touch. And be Sodom that they might only touch the hem of his garment. You know, Jesus allowed personal touch. What John do? Laying down his breast. Yes. Yeah. Jesus was for personal touch. But, but, oh, I forgot, I got a few of them. <laughs> you touch other people, Paul's neck, and kissed him, but not too much. <laughs> but not too much. 
how do things get out so blown out of portion today because we allow too much? True. To allow too much. Uh, how do people become homosexual? Because they're not born it. Nobody is born it. Nobody. I don't care what they tell you. They were not. Somebody has personally pushed them to that area because of too much touching, getting too close. Jonathan and David were close. The Bible is so clear on that. They were not homosexual. But they were close. Listen, in the military, how close were we to our, our fellow soldiers? Man, they're our brothers. You still say that, even when you're saved. You still, I mean, yeah, that was one of my brothers. He was in my unit with me. This March 17th, it was 43 years since I've been in basic training, this past March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. My drill instructor's name was Sergeant Patrick. I've never forgot that. The other one, I've never remembered. Never remembered the name. I've, I've been wanting to find, I, I like to find them and be a witness to those who are in my life. March 17th, this past one, I found out the name of the other one. Amen. 43 years later. The two guys that witnessed to me in Spain, I wanted to find them and let them know I got in church. I'm a preacher now. One of them is now a pastor down in Mississippi. Another one was doing uh, Sproul's website. Well, uh, <laughs> I still told him thank you. For those that don't know, Sproul's Calvinist. Is, uh, he said, if you need any of, the, any of the stuff we sell on the website, I can get you a discount. <laughs> That's okay. But, but I did thank him for what he did for me so many years ago to help me get in the ministry. Number three. Number three. Recognize signs when watching out for your fellow soldier. There are signs you can tell if something's going on in somebody's life. And you better watch out for it. You better watch out for it because you can tell if things are changing and you ought to be paying attention. You ought to care. You ought to care. Low morale. Can you tell if a pastor's got low morale? You can. Well, he used to be here. He's not anymore. He used to do this. He's not doing it anymore. Well, I guess we lost him. How do you know? Where's the personal visit? Where's the call? Where's the, I care about you, brother. Go out of your way. That's what we do in the military. What's the motto? No man left behind. Is that how we think about each other? Well, that, that rice guy, he's just kind of, he's just kind of ricey. Does anybody think, oh, he's just out there in the middle of nowhere. Man, you ought to be thinking about him. Not be thinking about him. Well, his church isn't running 1,500. There's not 1,500 people in that county, I'll invite them. <laughs> we ought to care about each other. We ought to care what's happening. We, we ought to watch over each other, help each other. We ought to. Late or missing. Not forsaking. You know, that's not just church. We've got to assemble as pastors together. As brothers in Christ. Amen. We've got to assemble together. We've got to. Amen. We ought to be meeting. Uh, when something comes up, it, it blows my mind. Why more people don't show up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, listen, you may not need it, but I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need your backing. Yeah. I need somebody there. I need to hear your health problems so I know I'm not the only one. I need to hear your bad story so mine look good. <laughs> I need some kind of encouragement. You know, I was told eight years ago, I shouldn't, or eight, nine years ago, that I shouldn't be able to walk and that I should be in constant pain because of the MRI in my back and neck. Uh, I'm still walking. That, that's going to encourage some people. Sure. You say, well, God can do that for you. Maybe he can do it for you. Maybe he won't. You, you know, we learn that in the military. Not everybody comes home. But some die in battle because they're supposed to. Some die in battle because they're defending. And listen, we, you've got to learn to just say that well, I was supposed to. What do you, you keep going? You, if this guy next to you falls down, somebody else comes up and takes the place. That's what we're supposed to do. 
we're in this battle together. We're in it together. So exhort each other so much the more. Well, times are getting hard. Can't get around and see everybody. No, the harder it gets is when you're supposed to do it. You're, you, when the battle's raging, soldiers rally, rally, lackadaisical manner. He's put a new song in my mouth, the Bible says. He's put a new song in my mouth. Listen, you, you, I learned when I was in the military, I had two friends of mine uh, come up to me. And uh, one said, Do you hear, did you hear that me and so-and-so, my other best friend, that we were going together? I said, no, I never heard it. She said, well, it's not true. So I don't know who's saying it, but it's not true. And both these people I loved. They were good friends. And then I'm going, I am defending them teeth and nail. I got your back. And then found out they lied to me. So one of them was married. So what I do? I stopped smiling. I became lackadaisical at work. Because it hurt. It hurt bad. I'm an instructor in the Air Force. I'm teaching people. I'm lackadaisical. Finally, one of the guys, one of the worst guys, one of the worst instructors as far as ungodly, talk about all the bad things. He goes to me, he says, Vince, what is wrong with you? He said, you used to come in here and play jokes and smile. He says, I hated working here till you got here. He said, you keep it alive. I said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you know what told me? I didn't have his back. I didn't have the other's backs. I was a testimony to him, and I lost my testimony. And you know what I learned to do? I'm just going to smile. I don't care how bad I feel. I'm going to smile. I don't care what's happening. I'm still good. And, and you guys know you feel better when you smile. Even when you feel bad, you still feel better when you smile. But more importantly, you make others feel better. And isn't it about others? It's all about others. Listen, when you see General George Patton sitting on a tank with two six-shooters, what's he going to do with those? And he did that going into battle. Sat on the tank, two six-shooters. What was he saying to his men? I'm an idiot? <laughs> he was saying, man, I got your back. You guys are going, I'm going. It's like, what's he going to do with two six-shooters? Nothing. But his example won the battle. And so we've just got to get that example and go forward and, and win that battle. We've got to go for victory. We've got to go for victory. Now, God's definition of victory, not the world's or not some crazy preacher. God's definition of victory. What are the results of watching for your fellow soldier? I'm going to go through this real fast, too. Many casualties are avoided. Many Cretans departed. Demas departed. Why'd they depart? I don't know. It doesn't say. I mean, I know what was in her heart, but I don't know who tried to help them. I don't know if somebody did or somebody didn't. But I do know there's a whole lot of names didn't appear there because somebody helped them. I know one called Mark that was headed the wrong direction, and somebody said, listen, I'm taking you along. And see, that's why I like farms, because he was Barnabas. That helped him along. See, see, I grew up on the farm, so you learn how to help things along. Barnabas. Maybe we'll get that one day. That's okay. It's, it's fine. <laughs> and that's why, you know, bus ministry is good too. Barnabas. Okay, so uh, he had it all together. Yes, he did. And then, how about uh, enemy cannot advance? Submit yourselves, resist the devil, and the enemy can't advance. How do you keep the enemy from advancing? You resist. You put up a front. You allow Israel to have armament. <laughs> you, 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 let the, you let it go. You don't call them and say, hey, listen, you better not go in. It's like, this ain't your country. Shut up. <laughs> That's what I would have done if I was not. No, I'm telling you that right now. It's like, what are you going to do for me? You're going to forget my name tomorrow, tonight, as soon as we hang up. <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do to help me? 
Now, now notice that. Submit what? It doesn't say yourself. It says submit yourselves. Oh, that sounds like a snake. That's Satan. That plural. I, I submit yourselves to one another. None of us are popes. I, I do know a pope. He pastors in Houston. I know a bishop. He pastors in Amsterdam. I know a cardinal. He eats off the bird feeder. Uh, so so there are a whole, whole bunch of things around. But what we're supposed to do is have each other's back. Do you know it's easier to resist the devil when the whole, whole troop is there? If you're fighting him and I'm fighting him and you're fighting him and you're fighting him, then I'm not going to fight you. Why would I fight you? And you know what I learned about older people too? Our brains don't work the same anymore. <laughs> I was telling somebody before, uh, when I first started going to church, the pastor's daughter, I sat next to, she was 12 years old, I was 20-something, and he'd say, turn to this, and she'd go, be there. And then they're going, I just got the cover open. <laughs> and I said, I am not going to let a 12-year-old beat me. <laughs> and I made a determination to be able to find the books of the Bible. You know what I found out as I'm getting older? It's not so much easier to find the books of the Bible, and I'm in it every day. <laughs> I'm finding out uh, if I'm going to write my name, I've got to look at my ID. <laughs> you know? Things don't work as much. Listen, give the older guys the credit for, for getting old. Yeah. Well, they've changed a little bit. Wait till you get there. <laughs> when that mind stops working so much, and, and the, listen, when something just flashes out. Oh, did I said it? I said that. I don't know how many times I've said that. <laughs> I said that. That is not what I meant to say. I don't say it a lot. I don't think, at least. That, but I have had people come up to me and said, "You said no, I didn't." Yeah, you said that. Well, if I said that, that is, that is not what I meant to say. Ever been there? Yes. Wait till you're older. <laughs> It'll happen a whole lot more. A whole lot more. Body of soldiers is strengthened. Your people are strengthened when you meet together as preachers. When the generals meet, the whole army strengthened. Sure. The whole army. When you have a good commander in chief, we do. <laughs> Can't say much for our military, <laughs> but we do. We do. The whole body is strengthened. Has anybody noticed our military is weaker than it's ever been? Why is that? <laughs> Listen, the godly ones have to, where are the commanders? We're the, we're the ones that we've got to get together. We've got to, that you may grow up in him in all things. Speaking the truth. This is what we like to do, speak our little pet peeves. Stop petting. If you have a cat, it's of the devil. <laughs> Listen, I don't care if you believe a little different than I do. Chances are you do. Chances are there's something we're going to disagree upon. We're fighting the same battle. We're going the same direction. Uh, we are. No matter how much our heart tries to tell us different. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Hey, your PowerPoint doesn't work good. According, listen, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to increase the body. It's all supposed to work together. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you speak the same thing. Now, that's what God wants, unity. Have you noticed that comes in growth? How old are you now? Man, you make me feel old now. 73. When I started watching him, uh, listening to him preach, I was in my 20s. Older than 20. <laughs> I've lived in the South 30 years. I've lived in the North 30 years. I'm not a Yankee. I'm not a Southerner. I'm a Stanky. <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm this old. 
I can't. But one thing I know, one thing I know is I, the people that we were differences, the older we get, we're, we're growing more together than further apart because we've been in the Word longer. And some of those whose minds are starting to go and may be a bit different, my man, give them credit for the battles they fought. You ever see the soldiers when they come back? They got things missing. So you throw them aside? No, they're the ones that fought the battle. They're the ones that ought to be honored the most. 73, how old are you now? Oh, wow, you guys are twins. Oh, 72. 71, we got a bunch of 70s here. 79, man, he's about to break the big speed limit. Listen, these guys get, have, have been through the battle. They're going through the battle. Believe me, they're not just going through the battle. Their body's battling them now. I mean, I'm telling you, look up to these people. They're, they're, they're not bad. They're good. They're God's people. They're God's people. And then lastly, the rear reward. The rear word, back up for a fellow soldier. I don't know who, who pronounces it how. I'm going to call it rear word, okay? Uh, I used to say re-reward, and I had no idea what a re-reward is. And, and then there, there's also people like Ruth that gathered up the rear word. But military speaking, the rear word are those soldiers that got your back. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah 52, verse 12, For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rearward he's before you he's behind you well how's he how's he there because i seem to be all alone well listen what the moment i got saved you know what happened he came in now i don't know about you maybe i do when you got saved did he come in oh so who's behind me right now god's in him i want him behind me Actually, he's older and slower. No, yeah, I, don't, I want you behind because in front, i have run you over. <laughs> I'm 61. So, listen, God's in you if you're saved. Amen. I want you behind me. I want to be behind you. The help for us, God has given us. He's given us the behind. He's given us the armor that we need. He's given it to us. Then shall thy light... Break forth as the morning and thine health. How? Look at the bottom. Glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. His righteousness. The stuff that he has. Listen, I'd rather a Christian pastor that doesn't believe everything I do be behind me than a lost person. I'd rather him be behind me than a charismatic. I'd rather him be behind me than a Calvinist. I want you behind me. I want you in front of me. I, I want to be protected. I'm old. I'm getting deaf. <laughs> Some of you guys got to be my ear. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I'm not certain how this is going to render because my fonts are different. Acts 1, 8. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I want you to look at this word. What's that word? Is that all that it is? The biggest little word in the Bible. I got a question for you. I don't know if you've ever contemplated this. Some of you, I'm sure, have. What's this say? How come the all's in front of Judea, Judea, not in Jerusalem? Why didn't it say all Jerusalem? Why did it say all Judea? I mean, doesn't common sense say, well, this is Seneca Falls. You better reach all of Seneca Falls. That is your goal, I hope. <laughs> I know it is. That's why he wants a bigger church building. Well, he wants a bigger church too, but that's why he needs the building. Because <laughs> people say, ah, it don't fit no more. Uh, yeah, that's a good thing to have. Isn't it? We, we drool over those kind of statements, don't we? <laughs> I'm envious. All Judea. Why does it say all Jerusalem? I think that's a good question. Why doesn't it say all Jerusalem? Why? Why doesn't it say that? Well, if you think about it, where's Jerusalem? It's in Judea. 
Jerusalem's in Judea. So God's telling you, you are supposed to reach all Jerusalem. Then why do you even list Jerusalem? Because what's he responsible for reaching first? It's priority. Okay, I'm, my, I am responsible for defending my base. I was at Keesler, I'm going to defend Keesler. I'm in Torrejon, Spain, I'm going to defend my base. That's priority number one. God tells you, listen, how can you defend the rest if you've got nobody to help you defend the rest? How can you reach the rest if you don't reach? You know, I, I know the churches that all they do is missions never reach their people. I got a database. All they do, listen, I'm not against missions. But you know you can do more for missions if you reach more people where you are? I mean, just common sense, right? The battle gets won where you are if there's more happening there. The first priority is Jerusalem. Second priority, Judea. Judea. Well, what is Judea? I'm, I'm glad you asked. I think somebody asked. Uh, I, I was going through the other priorities, but I'm going to jump ahead here. Because all that list is a priority list. The area of Judea would be equal to a circle from this church 37 miles out. That would be equal to the land of Judea. God told them to reach a land on camels and on foot and on hot days without air conditioning and without deodorant and without uh, Dr. Scholl's, without walkers, without cars. Uh, He told them to reach 37 miles out from Jerusalem. That's the land of, how much did he want them to reach? All of it. The goal of this church is not just to reach Jerusalem, it's to reach the outer parts of Seneca Falls too. It's to reach out. Well, how far is 37 miles out? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going back to my church because this isn't my church. (laughs) In Syracuse, Manual Baptist. We are literally, if you look at the map of Syracuse and you put your finger in the middle, that's where our church is. When I say inner city, I mean inner city. That's where we are. That's 37 miles out. You say, well, wait a second. That encroaches on me. Some of you are within that circle. And then there's other churches And other churches, I actually thought while I was sitting down there, about two of them I think I forgot to put on here. How do I reach all my Judea? It's simple. I help you. Because you're helping me. Listen, God didn't give me 37 miles, and you get in this area, I'm taking you down. That's my area. Listen, when the Marines go out, hey, hey, communications, that's what I fixed. You like it when the communications are fixed and you're out there, don't you? (laughs) You don't like it when you go, hey, uh, uh, hello? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Communications are important. And so he calls the Air Force in. They come in in his area. They're not stationed there. They're stationed somewhere else, usually a long way off. But those planes, you, yeah, they get there quick. Yeah, you're the Air Force, that's right. Mm-hmm. So we're helping each other. You're reaching your area. And what's that do? Look at New York State, just in our area. I just pick churches that reach me and churches I reach you. I want you to succeed because you're helping me reach what God told me to reach. And I'm helping you reach what God told you to reach. Oh, I'm in Seneca Falls. I can't lead anybody to the Lord here. It's not my territory. This is a fact. I know a missionary that worked with uh, the Amazing Grace Fair missions. Uh, This guy I worked with, they all don't, this is one missionary. Great soul winner at the fair. And I said, listen, you're here. I said, what are you doing? I said, we're going to go out. He said, that's not my ministry. My ministry is winning souls at the fair. Does that mean uh, you, when you leave Seneca Falls for a vacation, there's not souls out there? <laughs> there's nobody else needs help? 
You know, if, if I lead somebody to the Lord, I live next to the fairgrounds. I live literally walking distance of the fair. Well, not anymore. I'm 61. <laughs> I, I live within the cart distance of the fairgrounds. <laughs> okay. And if I go there and if I lead somebody from any of your towns, what do I do? Hey, you live in Seneca Falls, drive out here to church all the time. I don't think so. I'm going to find a church. I'm going to have your back. I want your back. Got a whole bunch more here. Let's get to the end. If you don't have each other's back, if all you care about, what, what part of New York's getting reached? I, I want it all reached. You know why? Because God does. God does. I, listen, I don't care how you started. I don't care how you got there. I don't care what college you went to. I went to Rules Baptist College. <laughs> I don't care. You got a King James Bible? You're going out there reaching people? Then you're my kind of person. Amen. You had a fight with somebody because you didn't get along with them? You're kind of ugly. <laughs> Marine. Yeah. You're a cult. <laughs> Yeah, somebody said that earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I may not get along with you personally, but I want you to succeed. You may not like me joking. I've had people, I, when I first candidated for a church, not the one I'm at now, the guy asked me after I preached, he said, with a straight face, do you always tell jokes from the pulpit? He said, if you don't like jokes, do not vote me in. Because I'm not changing them. <laughs> I'm me. I expect you to be you. Matter of fact, if you're me, we got a really big problem because I got more problems with me than I do with you. Amen. So do not be me. Amen. You better be you. Yep. No problems. You are. You are someone's missing armor. You are. Good. Pastor. 